Hello Internet, and I'm back to do the medium New York Times Sudoku today. Um, I ran out of time this morning, basically, so <coughs> I had to go to work. So um, I'm on my lunch, and I've got 26 minutes to... No, hold on. I've got 36 minutes to um, go through the medium difficulty um, Sudoku, so let's give it a go. Um, so as usual, I'll just start, with, um, start by looking through... 1 to 9 and um, try to do what's called um, a Snyder notation where I'm only pencil marking in two possible locations in every single one of the boxes within the grid. So to start with, starting with 1, um, these ones locks down these two columns and that one locks that cell which means we can already start with a 1. Um, <clears throat> And this one now creates the pointer pair. So when there are two notation, two possible locations for a digit, you pencil mark in. If you've got more than two, you leave it alone. So now this one and that one creates another pair. And now that's this is actually what's called a pointer pair, where whilst I haven't got any ones um, confirmed on this column, I do know that it has to be on one of these two cells in column two which essentially blocks out column two in um, box one. And I've got an actual one here, which means one can only be in the, these three cells. And I've got another one here, which gives me another pair. <clears throat> and I think that's all the ones. Just having a sip of water, um, just had my lunch. So you know, make sure I don't get indigestion. Um, so twos, that two creates another point of pair, but I haven't got any twos horizontally on the rows to allow me to pencil mark in just two twos. So I think there's only one two on the entire grid, so it's safe to say that's a weak number and, um, and I can't see any more um, placements, basically, potential candidates. So let's move on to threes. Um, threes Three sound particularly strong either, even though I've got three of them, but they leave me a lot of um, free candidate um, possibility. So looks like where I'm going to think of three. So let's move on to fours. We've got the same situation with fours, where it's locking these three cells, um, potentially in these three cells. So what else have we got? Do, do, do. We've got a pair of fours there, uh, nothing else. What about fives? So fives, I've got five up here, and these two fives lock down the two columns, creating a pair, a pair of ones and fives. And just to reiterate, um, when you've got a pair like that, it means within the same column or row, depending on the direction, or within the same box, the ones and the fives have to be in one of these two places. They can't be anywhere else. <clears throat> So it may be useful later, probably along the column, but also possibly within the within the box. But being as the box is quite empty at the moment, there's still five possible digits. Um, it's probably not that useful yet. Um, let's see, five, got a pair of fives here. Got five looking down and a five horizontally. Unfortunately, that doesn't create a point of pair because um, they're at a knight's move away. So whenever it's a knight's move or diagonal positions, um, they don't actually interact with the rest of the grid basically but um these two fives looking further down does give me another pair of fives <clears throat> and um and i've got three possible fives here and four possible fives in these two boxes so we're going to leave them alone for now um what about sixes we've got a pair of sixes here because of these two and that one there <clears throat> so six six Six, six, six. That seems to be all we're getting with the sixes. So, <clears throat> so the sevens. I do apologise for the coughing, but um, just constantly feeling like I've got something stuck in my throat. Uh, I can't see anything with sevens. So, now the thing to bear in mind when looking through the sevens is um, I've got a pair of um, one and fives here. So when I'm looking across from the seven. I'm actually blocking out all these cells. None of these cells can be a seven. 
leaving me unfortunately still with three possibilities so that's why I'm not pencil marking in but if um, I don't know if one of these three cells had been locked down then I would have been able to do a pencil marking in hmm and I think that's sort of sevens so let's move on to eights um, got these two eights locking a pair of eights over here this eight and that eight interacts as well so it locks this cell and these two cells leaving me a pair of eights here <coughs> and finally this point a pair of eights pointing upwards and that eight locks the eights into these two cells where I've already got an eight on one of the rows so that gives me another eight and unfortunately when I look across from these two eights I've got three positions again so not much to do there so eight anything anywhere else no let's move on to nine so I've got nine here because of these two nines and a nine over here so <coughs> when I do solve myself I tend to just um, quickly mark it in but um, I'm trying to be a bit slower just to explain the basic techniques basically so so I've exhausted um, all the possibilities with nines um, so I what I tend to do at this point is um, just go around the board again from one to nine and see if um, the fact that I filled in a nine, a solid nine, implies that the, the board has actually changed. So I might as well go from one to eight again at the very least to see if any more changes happens. Because um, the nine may interact with the remaining digits and um, create some new possibilities. Uh, so I'm not getting any ones. Uh, two is the weak number. I still can't see anything with it. So three. <clears throat> oh, it looks like I missed a nine actually. Uh, not a nine, but a pair of nines. Because this nine and that nine blocks out these three cells, giving me a pair of nines there. <coughs> so let's go back to two. Two is still weak. Three. Um, do, 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 do. Nothing's on three. Four. I've got three possibilities. Um, four, four, three possibilities here. Five. So five, five. Got three possible locations. There are lots of threes, as in um, three candidates for these digits. So not very useful at the moment. <coughs> Again, I've got three sixes there, three, six, three sixes there, three sixes here, seven. Hmm, this is looking quite difficult actually. So, eight. Uh, do, 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 do. No, I can't see any eights either. So, so I've just gone through one to eight again, and since I the last number that I placed was a nine <coughs> and implies that my normal technique of um, just going around the board doesn't actually do anything anymore. So um, this is where, you know, it's quite flexible what you want to do next, um, where you may want to look at the weaker columns and rows where you've only got two or three values left. <coughs> and um, so we could do that. Um, I'm left with a two, two, five, and six on here. So, two. I'm missing a two, five, and six on this column. And um, this is not particularly difficult technique, but um, when you have um, three numbers, three possibilities, what you want to do is basically. I'm looking at a column, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the rolls and um, see what happens. <coughs> so I've got six here, which means. They can either be a two or a five. I've got six here on the roll, so that could be a two or five. And instantly, that tells me something. That means I've got a pair of twos and fives, because six can't go in there. And in fact, if you look down here as well, we've got five here um, within, the same <coughs> within the same square, which locks down this cell. So when you've got a triple, um, I think if you can see any of the remaining digits, across that typically means you've got you've got a pair down here um locked into the remaining cells basically on on the cells that the single digit doesn't see so basically that six immediately locks um the six on these two cells and that six 
locks it onto this cell now, so that's a 6, and this 5 basically locks the 5s over here, and I can't see any 2s at all in any of the 3 cells, but because I've got a 6, I know I've got a pair of 2s and 5s, so um, I don't know if I explained that very well, but um, but from here we can probably do something, because this 6 eliminates that 6, leaving the only remaining 6. Now, bearing in mind we're only pencil marking two numbers at a time within a box of nine. <coughs> so if there's a pencil mark elimination, it means the other pencil mark is the valid digit, basically. So what else can I do? That's sort of sixes. Have I done all the sixes? No, I haven't. But let's see if the sixes do anything else. So that's six. It doesn't actually. So that's a little bit disappointing. <coughs> So, I uh, can't resolve the two sort of fives, so let's move on. But before I move on, <coughs> really sorry for the constant coughing there. Um, I'm actually going to erase these twos and fives. And the reason I do that is because um, if I leave the twos and the fives here, well, when I next move around the board, um, I may accidentally see a two and assume that that's a two. Um, if I forget the fives, basically, and incorrectly assume that that's a two, similarly on this cell, um, when I'm looking at boxes, basically. So to um, maintain the mindset that um, there are always pairs of digits within the, um, within the boxes of nine, um, it's not helpful to leave um, kind of notations for the columns and the, and the rows, basically. I mean, one thing I can do is um, I can pencil mark in the remaining twos and the fives. Then that's one way of solving this um, potential issue. So those are fives. But in this case, twos can be in every single one of the cells within this um, square. And when you've got so many possibilities, um, having the twos there actually doesn't offer much help. So what I like to do at this stage... Um, is to actually erase the pencil marks <coughs> and see if I've got any new um, interactions going on. But later on, it may actually prove useful um, if I have a two and five and look across and actually see another two or five, another two five pair. But right now, I can't see that happening because I've got two in here, which means there's no way I've got a two five pair. I've got five here, there's no way there's a two five pair. And there's already a nine here, so that's not a two five pair. So it's just not worth kind of um, confusing myself later on. So I'm just going to leave it. And um, but what I am going to do is quickly move around the board just to see from one to nine again, just to see if I've um, by placing this six and eight. Did I place the eight just now? Uh, no, I just placed the placed the six. Whether I've actually unlocked any new digits. Um, so ones, twos. So twos. Actually. I'll, did two sixes, didn't I? So there are more interactions going on. So I've created two more pencil marks of um, twos because this two and this pointer pair of twos locks the two in these two cells within this box. Um, <clears throat> nothing on twos. So, I mean, one thing I can do in theory is um, the only thing is I'm not very good at this is. Um, when I put in these two sixes, what I should be doing, if I'm a better Sudoku player, is actually see how it interacts with the rest of the, the grid, basically. And I think what you do is um, you look at the squares and look at all the permutations um, it may unlock. So for instance, I'll look at the four down here. I'm still locked into um, three possible fours. Um, but yeah, where was, where was I going with this? Um, but in theory, you could find more, um, I don't know, pairs and stuff like that, rather than going around the board um, from one to nine, looking for every single cell. Because basically, nothing should be happening within these four squares at all. Um, all the changes should be happening within these squares. So maybe I should do that and just look at one to, one to nine within these five squares and see if anything has changed. So three hasn't changed. <coughs> do, 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 do. Four, um, we've got two fours there, fives, <clears throat> five's not changed, 
six, seven. Um, actually, no, I should be looking at these. Yeah, when I'm looking at this six, I should be looking at these squares. So it's only these two blocks that I, sh I shouldn't be focusing my attention on. So fours, uh, I should be looking down. So <clears throat> threes, fours. So I'm looking at all these square, all these blocks. Seven, eight. Hmm. Still nothing happening. Oh, hang on. This pair of. So this six has created a five nine pair. That's probably going to be really useful. Nines. Um, nothing on nines. <coughs> so let's see if this five nine pair does anything for us. Uh, two, 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 five nine. So what I would do. I've got ones and twos, so I've got five squares there, so five cells there even. Um, let's look horizontally at um, this roll to see if this five nine brings me any either naked singles or pairs or even triples, which would give me a naked single to be fair. So um, so five nine, I'm looking for two, three, four, and eight. So two, three, four, and eight. And what I would do is um, when I'm looking for four different digits, two, three, four, and eight. What I'm doing is I'm looking, scanning on every single cell, scanning upwards to see what numbers I can get. So up here, um, I haven't got anything. Up here, I've got four. Bearing my two, what was it? Two, three, four, and eight. So I'm gonna ignore the five and a nine. So I've got three, four, and eight, and I'm looking for two, three, four, and eight. So that means the fact that I've got three, four, and eight here, that cell has to be a two. And now we are probably going to be cooking with gas because now we've got triple here. So it may be worth filling that in because um, it's not actually too many notations. I'm not filling an entire square, um, entire box full of numbers. I'm only filling three squares with a set of triples. So these three squares basically means the remaining five squares have to be specific numbers. So we are left with two five um two five six two five six seven and nine uh two five six seven and nine I've got two here five six seven and nine six nine two three no two four Oh, I'm losing myself now. That's the problem with um, looking at too many digits, basically. So, um, two, six, seven, so six, six and nine. So I've still got two, two, five. No, uh, what about here? Five and seven. So that's no use. <clears throat> so. This triple hasn't actually given us anything. I'm quite surprised by this. Um, we've not solved this puzzle yet because um, this is meant to be medium difficulty. Although actually this two gives us a triple here. So maybe that's why I should have focused my attention. So this should have been a four, no, six, six, seven, and nine. So I've got nine here. Uh, damn, still haven't got anything. So what did we say before? We've got two, six, and nine in these three cells, but I've got nine here. That means I've got two and six locked down. No, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, it means nine is locked down on those two cells. Yeah, it's actually when I'm seeing two presents of a digit that I get a pair, so. <coughs> um, so that means I haven't got anything yet. Oh, I'm getting a bit frustrated by this now. This is taking way longer than I expected. So, um, this is still a 2 5 pair. That hasn't changed. So, oh, hang on. But this 2 interacts with that 2, creating a pair of 2s, which gives me another pair of 2s there. Um, does that give me anything? 2 9. Uh, I don't think it does. So, let's just quickly go around the board again one two i'm going to look through the entire grid now just to see if i have missed anything at all threes three hasn't changed 
three, three, four. Four's locked here. Four. I'm surprised this pair hasn't given me anything yet either, but I've got a set of fours there, so maybe I should look at that next. Five, six, no, five. I haven't done five yet. Uh, but there's nothing on five, so let's look at six. Six. Six, 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 seven. Damn. I'm really surprised by this. I'm glad I didn't um, try to finish it this morning. Uh, nine. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't have had time to finish it this morning. So, right, so I've gone through the grid um, from one to nine and I still haven't seen any new changes. So, this is where I'm probably gonna change my tactics a little bit. And, um, and I'm gonna focus on the weaker numbers. And what I mean by weak number is, um, where we haven't got any ex presence of a particular number on the board and we know that two was a weak number because we only have one of them at the start i've got two now so it's probably still at least one of the weakest digits um i'm just quickly scanning to see if i i think twos and sevens are both weak so that's kind of good because um wherever two and seven interacts there's a possibility that um, there's a naked single there because um, the way I think of it is um, with the two with the weak numbers. One possibility is um, I can look for where the twos and the sevens could be, where the weak number is on the board, and try and place them. But the other possibility is um, if they're already weak, then if I focus on those two where they intersect, then it's more likely that I'll find other numbers um, from one to one to nine, basically. So um, I don't know if I explained that very well, but um, I'm going to have a proper think about it to see um, if I can give um, kind of like coherent explanation of why I adopt this strategy. But I use that a lot on hard Sudokus. So let's have a look. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I haven't got nine on here, and already it's paying off. Um, so by basically focusing on where weak numbers interact, you essentially eliminate, eliminating um, two values that you're constantly going to find missing around the board when you're looking for naked, naked digits, um, naked singles. But by looking at where they interact, there's a high chance where well, you're basically kind of like ruling out the two weak numbers. So, um, and being as the other numbers are more popular around the board, they're more likely to exist and then eventually give you a naked digit. And, um, and a naked single is basically just, um, I think I explained in yesterday's video, but basically imagine if you've got, um, if you're pencil, doing all the pencil marking, what you would do is um, you look around the board from the square, um, from the block box um, to the rows and the columns and see if you can find any um, occurrences so I can see a one so I eliminate that I can see a two three four five six seven and eight and now you're left with a nine and I think that's where the name came from basically and um, where it can't be anything else it's a naked single because it can only be a single digit so let's see if that does anything for us well this nine looks down on the pair of fives and nines which means I've resolved the five and a nine and this nine now gives me a pair of nines in conjunction with that nine and this nine here, locking out these cells. So, um, so before I move on, let's see. I also should look across with the original nine. I've got two possible places for the nine. I also place a six, so, but a six doesn't actually give me any new information because all the boxes, um, what is it? across and up have already got all the sixes filled in so it's not going to give us any new information unfortunately um but now what can we do uh let's see so by putting in the nine i've got three digits left so it's always worth just quickly scanning to see if um we've got a solution to these numbers so what we're missing is um one two and four and um can't see any of these digits on any of these um in any of these cells so nothing came off that um 
Have we got anything in these cells, I think? I wonder. <coughs> so nines are still locked into these two cells. I'm also looking for six and seven. Can't see any six or seven, so still no, no update on here. So why don't we look at these cells? I've just put in the nine and I've got two here, so there may be a seven in one of these three cells. I know the sevens, um, it could be here, but if the seven, um, if this cell doesn't see a seven, then um, what am I trying to say? There are at least two possibilities basically, because um, I've got at least, um, at least a five in here. So again, I don't know if I'm explaining that very well. So let's just, oh actually, that five eliminates that five anyway, so I'm being blinded. Ah, so I'm now left with a five. That's going to eliminate both the four and the eight. So that's really powerful. It means the remaining four has to be a four. Remaining eight has to be an eight. So I think that surely is going to do something. Uh, that eight gives me a pair of eights there. No, it still doesn't <laughs> unlock anything because um yeah i'm surprised by that so this medium is trickier than i anticipated actually so going back to where we were um just focusing on a two for a second let's see if we got any seven so seven can't be in there seven can be in all three squares so that was no good but let's see what numbers are we left in this column we're missing a three uh seven Oh, are we missing a one, three, seven, and something else? One, three, seven, and I'm being really blunt. Oh, it's a one, three, seven, and four. So I can see a one and a four here. One, three, seven. So I just need a, need a three, but I can't see that. So there's nothing there, but. I Whilst looking at the threes, I noticed that these three interacts, leaving me a pair of threes there. So maybe I should actually just go around the board and do some more pencil marking in first. Um, so for instance, these two, these two cells have to be a one because of um, this one here, which eliminates a one over here, giving me a one. So let's um, carry on two. Two is still a weak number, so I'm probably not gonna get anything. Uh, so let's move on to threes. Three, 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 uh, nothing on three, four, 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 nothing, five. Five feels like it's quite close to finishing, but oh, it's just not there yet. Five, five. Yeah, there's still quite a lot of possibilities over here. Six. Sot's law, I'm going to find. No changes has happened on the board, aren't I? Seven. Seven's a weak number, so let's look down. Uh, seven, 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 nope. Eight. Right, so eight, I've got an eight here, and I've got point of pair here. So with an eight on a roll, it means eight has to be there. So just to repeat, eight locks out these cells, these two eights, it has to be in one of these um, two cells down at the bottom, which means they can't be in here. So that leaves me with two eights, and I've already got an eight there, so... Oh god, I'm being completely stupid. There's already an eight here, so this is me being blinded, so um, I do apologise. So, got excited there for a second, thinking um, I've solved this puzzle, but I haven't. Um, the lows are nine, so... Yeah, so that was completely useless. So um, let's look at this roll because I can still see a two and um, I have a feeling that maybe it's a seven actually because I know I can't see a seven but there are only three possible digits left. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. I haven't got six though, so damn it. So that's a six or seven. So on this triple, I've got six, seven and eight. Eight can't go in either of these two squares, so in fact... Oh, what have I done? Eight's on here, eight is down here. Oh my god! I feel I should just um, restart 
this entirely because um, I've made so many mistakes. Maybe doing it over lunch isn't the best idea after all. But anyway, um, that, these two eights basically locks the eights into here. So I just went up to do some more pencil markings. And these two eights basically creates a pointer pair, eliminating the eights that was pencil marked here. So that resolves the eight, giving me a four free pair. And, um, and that's it. God damn. Uh, so, so now I've got a pair in here which are one, two, three, five, is six and seven. So let's put in the six, seven pair for now. That means that's that's a triple of um, two, nine, and five. I've got five down here, so five has to be in these two cells. That creates a hidden pair of twos and fives because um, the twos and fives can't go anywhere else within this box which means the nine can no longer be possible to be in this square because the two these two have to be two or fives so that unlocks the nine for me and that points to this pencil mark giving me another nine um getting some noises coming on my other computer so um and that nine also unlocks this nine so creating a nine there eliminating a one with the pencil marking so the only other one has to be the one the only other three has to be a three so i think now if i do more pencil marking in using the same logic i'm going to be able to solve this puzzle quite quickly so this column can only be a seven or within a box to be fair so these two sevens locks that to be a seven and i'm left with one digit here which is a four um because i've got one two pair there and these two fours points this way and finally um although actually i've already got a four here but the fact that this is a one five pair means um that can't be a four anyway but incidentally i see a four down here so that's a four meaning i've got a pair of fours down here um so i think i mentioned this trick yesterday but basically the four is locked into the bottom two columns in this box i've got the same situation here with the fours that means the box in the middle, the four has to be on the top row, basically. And there's only one cell that's available, so that has to be a four. Which means that is now a three, so that resolves the four three pair. And that four eliminates that, resolving the four eight. And um, this eight looks up here, and it gives us another eight. And I think the eights are done, so four, eight, and nine are all done now. So now I need to just check if I need to haven't cleaned up some of the pencil markings because um I've kind of kind of like gone around with a chain reaction but I can't see anything obvious so let's resume um this row only has one digit left and it's uh, three so that gives me a pair of digits down here and they are twos and sevens so up here I've got a pair of twos pencil marked in twos pencil marked in based on that logic two has to be up here somewhere uh, unfortunately, I don't know where it is just yet. Um, why don't I have a look at this column with um, three digits left? I'm, I'm missing a two, six, and seven. Two, six, and seven. I can see a six there. Uh, I can see a seven up there, but I can't see a six or seven, so still a triple um, that can't be resolved just yet. Um, what about here that's a seven and seven or six what about over here i've got uh i'm missing a two let's see let's look at this entire roll and see what digits i'm missing i'm missing a two three and two three and six so i can see a three but i can't see a two um two three and six i've got a two but like and i can see a six so that means that has to be a three because um Basically, this has to be two, oops, two, three, or six um, on this column, basically. But I can see a six, and I've got a pair of twos in here, so that can neither be two nor three, giving me so neither two nor six, giving me a three. So that resolves the three down here because I've got three and a three here, and I think that sort of three is done. So. Um, I've got two, seven, and hold on. I've got two, seven, and six in here. 
as a triple, but haven't got any resolutions yet. Um, what did I just populate? I just put in the oh yeah, put in that three, didn't I? So I should really look down here because I've got a pair of ones and fives, which means I've got a pair of two and sevens here, but I've already got a seven on here on the roll, so that cannot possibly be a seven, which resolves this two seven pair, and that resolves the two here as well. Um, so now this seven sees that cell, meaning I've got seven here, and these two seven in conjunction locks the seven into this cell. These two sevens interact, and that cell sees a seven, so that's another seven, which resolves this six seven pair, and that's all the seven's done. Um, sixes, so we've got two sixes locking these two cells, meaning that has to be the six, meaning interacting with that six, meaning the last six has to be up here, and I just el eliminated two, which means that's a two, resolving this one two pair, and that one sees that one, which means that one five is resolved, and I think that's sort of ones, so now I'm left with just two five and six remaining, where well, it should be quite easy to see that's a six. Um, this cell sees a 2, so it has to be a 5, and this has to be a 2, this has to be a 5, and this has to be a 2. So, um, this this took a lot longer than I expected, but I think um, by trying to explain the logic um, as I'm searching, I'm probably kind of like elongating the, the logic a little bit. So maybe what I should do is um, next time when I do medium, I'm probably going to skip the step where I talk about the strategy I'm currently using and actually just use all the strategies um, around the board first. And as soon as I spot something, that's when I can explain it. I don't know if that, that reduced the length of the, the videos by, by all means. Um, but I don't know if that approach is going to kind of, I don't know, jump ahead too much. Because um, I think when watching Cracking the Cryptic, one, one thing I do find is... Um, they tend to immediately spot um, the next solution and um, but kind of like bypassing the step of um, what they're doing whilst they're scanning around the board and um, and I find that sometimes can be a bit jarring um, in terms of well how did you get there in the first place how did you spot this um, interesting pattern that's on the board um, so if you have an opinion on that and if you want to see more medium difficulty videos please um, leave a comment below and tell me what you want me to do in the future um, until then, that's today's video um, and I'll see you tomorrow.